Hi, welcome back. If you are new, my name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my week 37 wrap up. Again, if you're new, what I do is I talk about the books I've read, I talk about any writing progress I've done, and then I talk about things in other media that have stuck out to me. Mostly focusing like story-wise or how ideas could be used for stories. Cool things like that. And as those who are familiar with me know, I am a mood reader, which means what I was working on the week before might not be what I actually finished the next week. And we're going to jump on in for my book wrap-up. The first thing I finished was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a cozy fantasy book that I've been hearing so much about, and it had a really long wait on my library. So then it finally came in last week, and I went, yep, I'm just going to stop what I'm doing, and I'm going to read this, and read it in one day. Very much enjoyed this. I think if you're a Dungeons and Dragons fan, the characters and settings are going to be kind of familiar with how things work. But essentially, this is a cozy fantasy because Viv, who is our orc, has decided that she wants to stop adventuring and she wants to settle down and open a coffee shop. She found coffee while on her travels, and the place she goes has never heard of it. And so she has to build up her shop, convince the locals that they really do want to try this, and set up a, the peaceful life that she really is wanting. And I loved it. I thought the characters were so endearing and felt so real, especially with the insecurities and then the hope of when you really, really want to accomplish something. I enjoyed it so much. And I will be having a longer review in a separate video here in the future. I then finished Terminal Peace by Jim Hines, and this finishes the Janitors of the Post-Apocalypse series. This series follows Mops and her sanitation and hygiene crew, which means her job on the spaceship is to clean things, make sure that like the plumbing's working properly, especially with the different alien species, and that no one's going to be getting sick from like pathogens that are being passed around. In this society, humans have contracted a plague that has basically made them into zombies. And the Krakow, which is an alien race similar to like squids or octopuses, even through their, their description, they're an ocean based species. They came to Earth and they saved humanity by finding a cure. But it also made humans pretty much indestructible, and they are the most feared species in the universe. The first book starts off where the ship that the sanitation hygiene group is working on gets a like, bioweapon that makes all the humans on the ship revert back to their feral state. But the sanitation and hygiene crew are not because they were in the process of cleaning up a huge mess and were in biohazard suits. So they did not get the airborne pathogen that restarted that feral state. Again, this is book three, so this is not what I've just described. But this finishes the arc, the trilogy for Mops, as she is finding out how to cure the feral humans once and for all and allow them to return to a normal society and life. Now this book was a little bit of a tonal shift from the last two. These are these are very much humorous books and you get to see humor as people are interacting with one another and just like in their delivery how they yeah it's all in the personal interactions. This starts a little bit after the second one ends, and it opens up with Mops receiving some tragic news. And that's all I'm going to say. If you like space opera and you like hijinks, this is a series you definitely should pick up. I think I'm going to do a series review for this one, 
because this is one that is very much underrated and it more people need to pick it up and enjoy it just because it is amazing and I am so thankful that we have gotten the third book though I would not mind getting more stories set in this universe later on and then the next thing I finished was the Nairo and the Beckoning Eroded Stone by Nada Almari and this is a novella that I picked up because I was told it was a space opera and it's not there are good and bad things about this story it is very much a different story structure than Western audiences are used to. It starts off very much on the macro and then it goes to a, a little bit inwards, a little bit inwards, a little bit inwards, until you finally meet the chosen one of the story. Like I said, this novella is not very long, so it takes about a third for you to meet the chosen one and then another third for the chosen one to really get into the adventure. So like I said, completely different structure than most Western audiences are used to. And I think that somebody put this as a space opera because it starts off in space, but the crux of the story is on a planet and it's more fantasy based. So science fiction fantasy, we're talking about other worlds and thing, and the mechanics of the other worlds and this time has magic. Okay, the story itself was interesting, but I think the execution needs some work. Definitely needs a copy editor because there are tense issues, which yes, do bother me as a reader, but was not off-putting until we get to the more chosen one story. And then the rhythm just felt off. At the same time, I think I might have mentioned this beforehand, this feels more like an oral story. So it's like, I can imagine if I was listening to this, I would have enjoyed it better. I guess it's because my parents are professional storytellers, so I'm used to listening to them tell me stories. I'm used to listening to other storytellers tell stories. So I do like that form of storytelling, but I don't think it always translates well to written stories. It You have to change some things, and I don't think that the author realized that when they wrote their story that there are some things you need to change from an oral story structure to a written structure to have audiences appreciate it better. But I would not mind reading something else from this author in the future. This is their first published work. And from what I got, I see a lot of promise. And it's just more the execution fell flat for me on this one. But the characters themselves were interesting. So if you're someone where execution of a story and tense, making sure like having the right tense of words and editing matters to you, this isn't going to be one that's going to work for you. But if you're someone who can ignore that and just dive into the story with the characters, I say give this a try because it was very interesting, especially as it is a different form of storytelling. And then I continued working on War Child by Karen Loichi. Not as much as I wanted to, but getting into it, still at the training stage of it, and I'm kind of curious to see where this is going to go. It feels very much like, I mean, it, it feels like the science fiction that was coming out in the early 2000s, which it, it was published in the early 2000s. I mean, it's going to sound bad, but I'm just not always in the mood for that sort of science fiction. But at the same time, it's interesting. I like being in the main character's head as they are experiencing their world. But I had a lot of questions. From going from the spaceship with that the child starts off on to then being a prisoner to then being rescued and taken in by this alien society. Right now, I'm left going, where where are we going with this character? What is, what is supposed to be happening? but I am still interested and along for the ride, which is something I've also noticed about reading the 10 to 20% of the books that I've been given for the self-published science fiction contest. I guess I'm not a early DNFer if I'm going, I, a lot of these books at the 10, the 20% mark, I'm like, yeah, I would keep reading. And that doesn't mean that necessarily all of them are, I'm really that invested in, 
but I would keep reading farther than the 20% mark to figure out if I am interested or not. So I guess I'm more of a medium size dnf -er. So I guess I need to read farther t before I decide whether or not to DNF a book, which is interesting. I did start off being someone who I had to finish every book I picked up. Then I finally got okay with, no, life is too short. I don't have the time. I'm going to start DNFing. But it seems like I still want to give books a pretty good ch chance before I decide, no, no, I'm just not going to read you. So I have a lot of S's compared to some of my other teen judges. But that's okay because we we all have different sci-fi that works for us and doesn't work for us. And I'm having a lot of fun. For my writing wrap-up, my Diana story, it started off as a short story. And so I was just using one Scrivener document. And since I've been expanding it, I realized I needed to break out the scene. So I went through this week and separated each scene into its separate document because it's easier for me to see. It looks kind of like an outline because you can see how, well, for me, I use the descriptions of what each scene is about. So then I can kind of see the rhythm of how the story is going. And at the stage that I'm in, that's great because then I can also see places where I'm like, okay, I need to add something here to fill the, fill the story and make it feel more rich, more, more like a full world. So that is what I worked on this week was, because I'm not an outline person beforehand, I'm basically getting, got that visual outline so then I can figure what am I needing, what steps am I needing to do for this story. And then for other media. I listen to more podcasts this week. My primary job is doing more more appointments in person, which means at the end of the day I clean and I before the pandemic I would always put on a podcast while I was cleaning a room because I have to sanitize everything. The cleaning crew only does floors and then like stocks the paper towels and the soap dispensers. I'm responsible for wiping all the furniture down. So one of my favorite podcasts is Writing Excuses and the past two have been with a real astronaut talking about writing and I've been really enjoying those podcasts. Just even getting to see the different perspective and this astronaut, she, her name is Katie and she's really wanting to help make space more accessible to people and stories, which as somebody who likes reading science fiction and writing science fiction, yes, I, I would love my science fiction to be more accessible as well. And then I also really enjoyed the most recent world building for masochists. So yeah, the topic this time was falling in love again with world building. And it was talking about, you might get, or for writers, we might get burned out with world building or there are aspects of it that we don't want to work on anymore and different ways to have our minds have that fallow time so that we can get back in the groove of enjoying world building. And there's different ways that many people do world building. I've always been someone that I start with names, but other people start with maps. Other people start with a world, like a device or a plot idea, and then daydream from there. Daydreaming is part of the fun of it. I know I typically don't do a ton of world building before I sit down to write. I'll just do a little bit. And then as I write, I flesh things out. And then after my zero draft, that's when I go back and be like, okay, I need a little bit more rules to make sure everything is consistent. I don't know how you do it. If you're a writer, how do you, how do you do your world building? And if you're a reader, what depth of world building do you like in your books? And how do you like your world building to be given to you? I think that'd be an interesting one to know. I'm interested to know. <laughs> so that was two, that was the two podcasts that really jumped out to me. And I like how they both really are related to writing. So even though I wasn't doing a lot of active drafting, still thinking about writing a lot. That has been my week 37. Thank you. 
and have a great day. Bye.